Josh, talk about um, what you think happened within the first five minutes of him coming into our yard. You know, he's in a new place. Then you walk into the yard. He won't let me anywhere near him. Um, He's snarling. He's growling. He's showing me his teeth. Right. I think he... uh... He was in panic mode. It was, his brain was in fight or flight fully, and so he went crazy. You know, they 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 get real nuts when they go into fight or flight, and so he went into it real bad. Um, He's thinking he needs to save his own life, right? You it's, know, it's, by it's jumping panic. an eight foot fence. He doesn't even know where he's going. So, um, you know, he's trying to smash his way through the fence once he realizes he can't jump over it. Trying to launch himself through um, a closed window. And then he was also going at us to attack us. Yes. So there was only really, you know, he didn't show up with a muzzle on, right? So and he didn't have any tools on. All he had was a leash. And trying Thank to get God. that leash um, it was too close. He was, was going to bite. He, he had already, when I first walked out, he was already in that mode. Right. And he came right at me. Yeah. You know? So you know, the only thing I could do at that time would be, was to open these doors and to hope that he came inside, which he did. I opened the doors. Which he then tried to. Inside, and then he and then it's obviously a bowl and china shop in the house. He's trying to launch himself out a closed window. Hard. Yes. Hard. He if he would have broken that window, times, um, he'd be gone. Luckily, that window didn't even budge. He's acting like, you know, I imagine a lot of these dogs that, um, you know, around the 4th of July, people post... The dog got spooked by the fireworks, it jumped a fence, it jumped off a boat, it jumped out a window. Right. That's like the mode that he was in. The brain just goes there. But his brain can go there pretty quickly. Yeah, the the threshold is way too low. Oh yeah, oh yeah. There was nothing, his life was not in danger at all. No, and that's how the owner's mom described him at the vet. She freaking went nuts at the vet. So it's kind of like that, except nobody was holding the leash, right? He was was running. I was able, I was able to actually kneel down like on my side and he actually I got him to approach me cautiously but as soon as I even like moved like even a centimeter he was running away yeah and then at that time I was trying to at least grab the leash but with after that if you got within 10 feet of him he was trying to bite you or right. trying to run away so what right. have you been doing um that was a couple days ago oh um, yeah so we, we resolved that but I actually did get my my foot on the leash my hand on the leash and um, I was able to bring him with me and um then I just worked my, you know, what I do, and I spent time with him, and the more time passed, as he was in close proximity to me, he started to realize that he wasn't in danger, the adrenaline would die down. Once the adrenaline died down, then I started handling him more. This is all in session one, and just touching him and stuff, and eventually getting to the point where I could get the collar on, and then, you know, and then putting them away, and then coming back and doing that again later. And right. just, just basically, so what we've been doing for the past few days is just getting them out of the kennel, getting the tools on, getting outside, getting back inside. Looking for bite attempts, looking for flight attempts, right. showing him, hey, we're not here to hurt you, buddy. We're here to feed you, we're here to help so, you. Yeah. <laughs> so I got to the point now where I can, he'll come out of the kennel, He'll stick his head of the kennel, I can put the leash on, I can put the collar on, we go outside, he does his business, we can come back inside. So today, I was bringing it just a little bit further because that's going well, and I bring him into the training room um, and just doing a little bit of recall. recall. Yeah, and he's even, he was even cuddling up with you, right? Yes, a little yeah, bit. Yeah. yeah, it depends on how he's feeling, if he's feeling spooked or whatnot. So, the, but the job is going to be to teach him that calm, submissive yes. state of mind, right? And to be a follower, and all that other stuff will go away. Those are just symptoms. Those are just symptoms. They're really bad and they're really dangerous for him and everybody else. And we already know he's a biting dog. He's here because he bit. If he didn't bite, he might not have showed up here, although he probably still needed he still oh, for sure he needed this. Because he's two. Yes. Right? He needed this a year and a half ago, you know. So uh, but he got here because he finally bit somebody. It no, he's bitten a couple people. Oh, he's a couple. Mm-hmm. They just wrote about the one on the form. Well, you know. So, the female owner's mom called me and was like, oh, anytime anyone comes in the house, I have to hold him back. Right. Or else he's right. running right up to them barking. Right, right, yeah. right, right. And so, and that's a stressful situation for everybody. Yeah. And, and that doesn't help. It's, and, you know, holding, them, holding him back, um, although it keeps him from going up on the people and, and maybe doing damage and intimidating them, it still is a bad method because it's keeping him. Right. It's getting him even more. Yes, more more you know income. I mean? Yeah. So, um, the recall. 
So we're that's working where we on start, the recall. There we go. Yep. And that's where we're going to start with him. And so I've been starting it. I've done a couple because I needed to get him into the yard, or in from outside. I need to get him into his kennel. So he's had a few of the beeps. He knows that it needs to come to me at this point, but does he? It's up, you know, depends on his options. He's still in this, he's not a follower yet, so he's still looking to run, right? So first thing he did today when we came in here, and you know, I expected it, was to try to go right up the stairs. Yeah, you know looking I mean? for any option to get out. What about the bathroom, or what about, it's just escape, right? So the recall is going to be the thing that really starts to change him. It does with all the dogs, but we're going to see a drastic change with him because it's going to take him out of that fight, out of that fight and flight, out of that panic. And that's probably what he was in when he ran up to that guy and hit him. 100% because he's nervous. But the thing is, he's overreacting, he's nervous. This is the same story, this is the same story over and over again with every dog. Even, even the puppy that's here right now that has no bites and is just causing stress at home. It's the same story, yeah. like they're just not followers. They haven't been created. They don't followers. listen when you really need them to. They're not listening. Even he can be nervous, he can be afraid, he can be in panic, but if he listened, he'd say it. fine, yeah, yeah. So don't worry, you know, like, when we get fearful dogs, we got another fearful dog in right now too. We get dogs that are afraid of everything, um, uh, or, or dogs who are confident, but they're still causing issues. It all just comes down to they're not listening. Even if he's panicked and he's terrified, it doesn't matter if he listened. You could tell him what to do, and then he would he would grow, and he wouldn't be as terrified because he would be able to watch the situation instead of panic into the situation. We could say, "I know you're afraid of that right there. Come over here and stay, and that will give you an opportunity to watch it." Oh, and be quiet, just chill, right? That's him listening. Now listening, he's just gonna go with his panic, go with the instincts. He's not in a pack of dogs where they're going to correct it properly, right? He's with people, and we tend to just kind of. You know, we're not really sure how to punish things. We're not really sure how to correct and direct. So the best we can do is just try to restrain him over here because we know if he's over there, he's, he's going to be trouble. So let's just keep him right here, right? That's the best. That's the best most people can do. Lock him away. Put him in the bathroom. Put him in the kennel. If he listened, if we were able to create the follower, then we could expose him to the situation and he could grow. Same with the puppy that's in right now. Same with the fearful dog that's in the other room. Same with bear. Right? He's very bad. His reactions, his symptoms are very bad, but it just still comes down to him not having somebody who's, who he follows, somebody who's leading him. He doesn't listen. You tell him to do something, he's not going to do it reliably. You tell him to stop, he's not going to stop. That's it. If he did that, guess what he'd be doing? He'd be listening to you, which means he prioritizes you. So if you see something scary or desirable, Desirable is just as much of a pain. To yeah, they run right up to it. Because they want to, you know, they're going to drag you to go to the squirrel. They're going to drag you to go up to the people. Even if they're not scared and being aggressive, they're just excited and playful. It's still going to cause problems. If they're followers, if they, if you're the leader, and they prioritize listening to you, they see these things scary or desirable. They stop and they look at you with a calm state of mind to see how they should be responding. They'll let you direct them, okay? So that's what we're creating. We have to create a follower here. This guy needs it bad. I mean, he's yeah, I mean, it's, it's this is his only option for his family to keep him. His life will be, will be cut dramatically short if, if he does not if listen, right? Right. Out, right. So I'm very confident that he's going to turn around because they all do. Yeah. It's just a matter of time, putting the time, yep, and the effort, to, and the skill of the trainer. Yeah. The the thing that is going to determine whether or not he's going to be successful for his life is is he going to have a person that he can rely on? Is there somebody that's going to take him under the wing and be responsible for him? Right. It takes one person to be really, really dedicated to the dog. Now, if it's kind of a flimsy household, right? Sometimes you see it where. There's a bunch of people, but not there's but everybody's kind of like helping. Nobody's like the core. This guy needs a person. Yeah. A person. Right? I think he's got chow on him. He reminds me of a chow, he's got the marking on the tongue. If that's the case, even if it's not the case, he still strikes me as the type They're that one needs dog, a one person. owner dogs. Yep. Right? So we can't have a casual owner 
for a dog who, who needs a serious serious uh, dog and, and casual owner does not mix. Right, we need commitment yeah. from a person. And that would be the thing. So, so that's why he's gonna he's starting to do well with me because he's he's getting that he's getting that medicine of a person who's committed to him, and who's also committed to making the relationship one where I'm leading and he's following. Correct. He's already over here because he doesn't want it. Right? Yeah, I know. Look where he is. He puts himself. He in wants the but Watch, but watch what Josh can achieve with a recall. Independence you know? isn't working out for him. Yeah. And it's not working out for anybody in his life, and it's only going to be problems, and it's going to end with really really sad situations, tragic right. situations. So, I'm not even, don't feel bad for taking away his independence. He needs you to if he's going to live in this world, right. right? He's not living in the wild. He's not in the wild. Well, you know, you, you, you look what he did with his, quote, independence. He runs up to somebody and bites them. So, that's like, your, you know, your choices are clearly really bad, so you can't have your independence. Domesticated right dogs, yeah. you know, <laughs> if, if a dog has independence, it's because they've been raised properly and, they, and they, they've their responses been. are appropriate. Right. Um, you don't just... A dog doesn't just pop into your house at eight weeks old and you say, here's all the freedom. Yes. It's not how you raise a dog, it's not how you raise a kid. Right. You open up the world to them, you open up their freedoms as they earn them, as they become reliable. If we give them freedom right from the get go, everybody does this by the way. It's just about everybody. They get the dog and they say, it's like, it's like the Lion King where he's showing Simba, it's like all, everything the sun touches is yours, yes. right? It's like, this is all yours. Welcome to the house. You can go in any bedroom. You can do whatever you please. Here's all the toys. You can have food whenever you want. Everything's yours. You can jump up on the couch. You can jump up on me. You have complete freedom, right? And then things go wrong. Oh no, the dog's not listening. Oh no, the dog's dangerous. Oh no, he bit somebody. Right, or even just a pain in the butt. He's, right, just jumping, counter up. surfing, They're barking. Around. So then it's like, well, now we got to, you go, you look in the training and just about every training modality, no matter what one you choose, they're, they're just going to start limiting freedoms, right? So now you said, oh, we got to start like making him wait for food, making him wait at thresholds. You start, you start limiting his access to things and he says, wait a minute, I'm used to freedom. And now you're limiting it. I know the taste of having They're going to fuck the system. Now I'm frustrated. Yeah. They, yeah. I'm out of here. I'm going to try to jump the fence. Yeah. I don't, I don't want this. But if you never... Give them everything to begin with. They don't know what they're missing, right? So if you if you open up the world slowly, you know, like we say, the kennel's home base. There you go, the kennel. We come out of the kennel. We work on something. It, it might we're living with you, but we're going to be working on something. We're going to be working on chilling in the living room, or working on our walk, or whatever. And then it's back to your kennel. And then later we'll take you back out of the kennel. We're going to go do this thing together. And then it's back to the kennel. And then we take you out of the kennel. This is puppy stuff. You take them out of the kennel, you're teaching them how to go in and out to the bathroom, how to wait for food, and it's back to the kennel. Come out of the kennel, we'll teach you how to be on the place so one day you can be here, you know, and not so much in the kennel. And then it's back in the kennel. The kennel is a place where you put the dog, and you know they're not having any unwanted on experiences. Right? This doesn't strike me as a dog who had that type of structure. Mm -mm. This strikes me as a dog who had, he could just pick up and just go. I know, the only thing that stopped him is that he can't open the door. Mm -hmm. If he could open doors, he's gone. Gone. Right? He's gone. But still, the thing is, he could pick up in a room and just go and do whatever. I could go check this out. I could come over here and I could check this out whenever I want. I could actually go over this door's open. Hey, I can go up to the stranger and bite him. So this means this is my house. This means I'm high up in the hierarchy. This means I make the choices. This means I'm leading. So somebody's here. Must be my job to go deal with this. Yep. Right? Nobody's stopping me. Hold me back is not, holding me back, it's not how a dog would do. Mm -mm. So if a dog's going to stop them, they're not going to like just hold them. No. <laughs> no. They're, they're, they're going to correct them. him. They're going to correct him and they're going to get between, it's going to be him, the dog is doing the correcting, and the thing that he wants to go up on is like, no, no. And that's right, you know. Not your responsibility. A more effective way, more dangerous way, not recommended this way, but a way that would actually get through his head would be like, you want to go up on them? Go ahead. As soon as he gets up there, punishment. Send away. Right. You want to go up there? Go ahead. You get up there? Punishment. Send away. Right? You want to go up there? Oh, you're not going up on him anymore? Good job. Good. Yeah. That's way more effective than holding him back and him saying, let me out. Let me out. Let me out. That's just going to get him stuck there. Okay. Recall. This is what they've been working on. There. Get the number nice and low here. 
Come. That's a good boy. Right. That's nice, baby. Amazing. Boy. That's what Josh has created in the past two days. That's is good. a way to get Bear from that's point good. A, wherever he is, over to Josh, all hands free. Oh, that's good. That's and good. a stay. Nice work. And nice the work. ability to reach down and pet him without Bear right. snarling, trying to bite us, or running right. away. Right, because you know, you get the stranger danger, and you have to overcome that because I was a stranger. There's familiarity now. Creating trust, Good. creating respect. Yes, yes. She yes. has a really cute face. Good. Good. Wow. I'm impressed. And then, of course, a release. Right. And he's going to have to let her stay and all that basic stuff. So. Touching him all over the place. Yeah, yeah getting him used to all that. Getting him used to all that. He looks so relaxed. Yeah, he looks so good. He's not panting. He's not foaming at the hair mouth. Hair. He's he's not like That's hyperventilating. Good. He looks really good. A little puff of air back here is not recommended that you do at home. But what I get to see is like it's a dog is how they're feeling about me. The other day, when I, if I were to do that, he would just turn around and probably bite me. Right. Right? Now, For sure. They kind of mimic if another dog sniffing them. They feel that air coming out of the nose. They feel that. You feel it back here. So they turn around. Same way if, like, Riggins were to try to do that to him. I, if he didn't want it, he would, he would use his body to say, knock it off, or he'd even just strike. Good. Beautiful. Now he's just letting me do it. Good. Stay. He doesn't have a stay. He no. Have anything. No. He's actually, let's see, so we've had a new influx of dogs coming in here. We have a puppy, we have dogs that are around the same age. Um, and he's the furthest behind the knowledge. Yeah, yeah. He's the furthest behind. So he didn't have anything. He didn't have a stay, didn't have a recall or anything. Even the puppy that came in for six months um, had a little bit of that going on. He doesn't have any of it going on. And I don't know if they did anything with him. Maybe they used food or something so that I haven't been able to produce that mine, right? I don't know. All I know is that out of the group that's coming in now, he's the furthest behind. Which and would explain why he needs more time as well. Oh, well, he's yeah. also aggressive in yeah. a rehab case. That's different. But I mean, we've had rehab cases that knew all the right. camps. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Not only does he, is he not listening, is he not a follower, is he dangerous, is he a rehab case, but he also, Lacks basic, basic stuff. Now, he's smart, so he's picking up on it pretty quick. Stay. 